Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So if there's anyone new here, my name is Danny DeFreitas. I mainly specialize, specialize? I mainly do like beauty videos, but today we are gonna be doing something a little bit different and a little bit fun. Basically, I've seen a lot of these videos out there and it's like assumptions about me and I just really enjoy watching them and I know I'm really late to the game, so I just thought, right, I'm gonna do my own. So I put a questions thing on my Instagram stories and I got loads and loads of replies. So let's do this. Who is ready? Firstly, I also wanna say like, just before we get into it, thank you so much for everyone who's supporting me on YouTube and just part of the family. Like it means so much to me. Honestly, you guys are like my life. So thank you so much. And if you're not yet subscribed to maybe towards the end, feel free to like this video, subscribe, you know, show the love, share the love. All right, so let's get straight into the video. First up, we have one here from Jake's Fizz. I don't even know if I'm gonna say the names because I'm always so bad at pronouncing people's names. But it says, you started doing makeup at an early age. This is not true. I kind of started using makeup when I was around about 16 because I had really bad skin and I also suffered from something called impetigo. Because I was really insecure about it, then I kind of started using makeup. And the first makeup that I used was a powder from Rimmel, which I used on my face to try and like help just make my skin look even. It wasn't my shade, it wasn't the best thing for me. It definitely don't just put powder on your face for no reason, like it just doesn't work like that, unless it's a powder foundation. Actually, only after I was a hairstylist and like fully a hairstylist working in a salon at one of the flagship salons from a, a huge global company that I actually decided from working backstage with so many makeup artists that I wanted to do makeup and then I profession I like I went to an academy to do makeup and then I would say that's when I kind of professionally started makeup. So maybe I don't know, did I start when I was 16 or did I start when I was like older? I'm not sure. Professionally, not so young. Okay, next question that we have is you struggled to come out about your sexuality. This is a little bit more personal, but I think it's always really nice to open the book and just be as truly transparent as possible. It was a struggle. I'm not gonna lie. I think it was a really big struggle for me. And at the same time, I think that most people in their life may or may not have had a struggle. So whether it's your sexuality, whether it's being bullied for something else, then every single person has their own struggles. Do you know what I mean? Like that just makes us who we are. And I think what makes you even more representative of who you are and who you will be is how you're Deal with those struggles and how you turn it around. I definitely feel like I wish, <laughs> I wish my sex sexuality was something that was a lot of a lot more of an easier journey. But I can truly say that um, it doesn't do completely define who I am, and I'm in a really good space right now where I have an amazing relationship and family and friends who just completely know who I am and completely support me for who I am. And that also includes all you guys out there as well. Yeah, don't let things define you, just be who you are. Okay, so we have here, you are, I guess, you're happy from the inside, need a truthful answer. This is so good. Oh, you guys, are, you want the tea. I would personally say that on the inside, I'm probably the happiest I've ever been in my life. I feel really blessed and I feel really, really grateful, guys. And I think happiness is like this whole quest, like the search for happiness, but happiness is basically a state of mind. And this is what I personally think. I think it's a state of mind. And if you are more grateful for everything that you have and not focus on everything you don't have, then you feel content and what you do have. So yeah, I would say I'm naturally quite a happy, positive, energetic kind of guy. But I do have my moments. We all have our moments. We're like, oh God, please. Yeah, overall, I would say I'm quite happy. If I'm feeling more emotional, then I think it's also really important to be emotional. Like if you're feeling like you want to cry, like cry, like just let that emotion out. Just live that emotion because all of the emotions that we feel are there for a reason. Overall, I'm pretty happy. And I actually feel like the older I get, the happier I become because I'm almost like more comfortable and confident 
with myself. I definitely feel like the one thing that I do struggle with the most is I am 110% a people pleaser. So I, in my youth, especially when I was like a young teen growing up, I would always try and please everyone else. Even if I didn't want to do something, I'd be like, okay, cool, I'll do it. Like, I'll go there or I'll go do this or I'll go and watch that film, even though I didn't want to, just because I was a people pleaser. And I feel like the older you get, the more comfortable you are to just say, no. I'm not into that. <laughs> I feel like your search for happiness honestly just comes from within. I hope that, you know, I truly feel so happy right now and I hope that I will be happy for a long time. And if anything is to come into my life that might try and like disturb that roller coaster, that's completely normal. So we can turn it around and make it a positive. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, this next one's really good. You're super fun and chilling. I guess like chill that, right? You're the type to forgive easily. I would say that uh, I don't really feel like I'm that fun. I feel like I'm actually quite boring. Like I stay at home quite a lot. I love hanging out with friends. And usually if I'm hanging out with any of my friends, it's normally more of a chilled thing. We definitely like doing activities and stuff, but it's more of a chilled vibe. I love chilling. And I feel like that's because I love work so much. I'm always constantly on the go with work. I put all my energy in that. And then in my social life and in my personal life, I just want to chill. Like I love chilling out. Do I forgive easily? Probably not. <laughs> it takes a lot to get me angry, but I feel like I normally give people chances. And once you've had your third strike, you're out. <laughs> No, I don't know. Um, I think forgiveness is really important, but I see it as I would probably forgive someone just to get that off my shoulders and just so I'm like not thinking about it. Yeah, I really am very specific about who I surround myself with and make sure that they're really good people and nice people and genuine people because um, I want to just give and not think about anything else. So I know, I know that I need to be around people who um, are just the same way and like are truly genuine. Okay, so I think this one's not fully here, but it says you do not like drama and I think that means drama I'm not sure if I'm honest this is completely me I do not like confrontation I do not like drama I feel like there's so many like gossipy things yeah we all love a bit of gossip we all love a bit of tea we all love a bit of juice definitely but like I think I like tea like it's interesting I'm like oh yeah cool ooh, yeah oh wow ooh, ooh, ooh. but I would never provoke drama at all like I hate drama um maybe i don't know i've always felt like people if they maybe look at my instagram might think that i'm a bit more of a diva but actually when you meet me i'm so not like that i'm i don't know like just i'm a bit nerdy i think i'm a bit geeky and a bit more chilled i don't know i don't know say so definitely i do not like drama and there's no really like i'm not a dramatic person like that at all i would say like i'm a bit of a diva sometimes but like i'm not a dramatic person and i definitely do not like drama i'm like always away who likes Confrontation, oh my god, like I do not feed off that. No, 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 no. Okay, we have one here from JD Jackson on score 1991 says, Your worst fear is being lonely. Love you. Oh, I love you too, babe. Oh my god, that's so sweet. I think my worst fear is actually like tall bridges. <laughs> I'm actually so, so scared of bridges. I'm not exactly sure why. I have a bit of vertigo, I guess. So whenever I feel like I'm near an edge or something, I'm a bit like, Ooh, that's a bit scary. And if I'm on a bridge, that's unstable and wobbly and it's I'm just scared I'm just so scared that I'm gonna fall over it's so annoying another fear I have this is so stupid it's downward escalators and the reason why is because when I was young I was going down the escalators at Liverpool Street Station in London and I was with my dad and my brother and they went ahead of me and I was going behind them and I missed my step and as I missed my step I was literally like oh my god like I was just I felt like I was dancing on a spot for like a minute obviously it wasn't a minute it was just seconds but I was dancing on a spot I couldn't find my way I was gonna fall over and then this guy grabbed me from behind and like helped me and then I kind of like regained my stability and I honestly guys like I don't even know how to describe but I felt like if I was to fall down a metal escalator I would hurt myself so bad and my dad and my brother, I don't even think they realised at the time. But ever since then, I've just got this like fear that every time I go down an escalator, I have to hold on <laughs> to the handrail. So if I have a coffee and a cake or like if there's something in my hand or like a suitcase or a bag, then I have to have one hand free to always hold on. Otherwise, I can't do it. <laughs> so I have to get a lift. But yeah, that's probably my biggest fear. Being lonely... Nah, I'm, I'm kind of cool with my own self, I feel like. But I do love people. I love people so much. I love being around people. But that's definitely not my worst fit.
Yeah. Okay, next up is one up from my bro from Quang saying, You ha now have to hide your trainers because of me. Yes, I do. I have a bit of a, uh, a thing for shoes. I absolutely love shoes. I love the craftsmanship of shoes and I especially like just designer shoes it's always been a bit of a thing and I definitely feel like I don't have enough space for it so yeah it's a bit of a problem but I love shoes like, who doesn't love shoes man that's so cool so this one's from uh, Twiggy Wilts and I just had to read this out because I thought it was super cute Twiggy says who cares about other people's assumptions just do you I love that so much it's so true like do not take this seriously guys this video is just for lols it's just for entertainment it is nothing serious you should not worry about other people's assumptions about you but I also feel like it's nice to discuss this because it's like what do people really think about you and shrug it off and like tell the truth um, because sometimes you're so curious like I always think about other the people like I wonder what they're really like so this is a good way of just like getting to know someone I would say okay so we have one from Miss Maria and she says you wear your heart on your sleeve Ooh, that's a really hard one if I was to meet someone for the first time sometimes I just feel that spark and that energy and that connection and then that's just amazing and I would be completely open with that person so I guess in that sense yes but then to get to me and my core I feel like I'm a little bit more to myself and reserved in a way. Um, there's probably like, I'm not someone who's got like loads of friends and like know loads of people. I know loads of people, but I would say I'd probably count my true friends on like one hand. So for that reason, I don't really know what the question is. <laughs> okay, this is a really good one. You can cook, I wish. I wish guys, I absolutely love food. I'm a complete foodie. I love going out to eat. I literally love food. I love trying out new things. I actually eat pretty much everything. The only thing I do not eat is rabbit. Recently I have been thinking about maybe going towards a little bit more of a vegetarian or pescatarian diet, but I'm just very, very open to trying out new things and I love exploring new cuisine and stuff like that. I wish I could cook better. I feel like on a day to day, I'm just, I just don't have the time. It's something that I do enjoy if I'm getting into it. Like I put some music on, I'll be like, mm -mm, put some Disney tunes on and be like, yeah, I'm gonna do this omelette. Um, but it's quite hard. I definitely feel like being Portuguese. I was born in London, but both my parents are Portuguese. Like your mom basically feeds you and she feeds you good. And then when you leave home, you miss that. You miss that food so much. I miss my mom's cooking every single day. And unfortunately, because she used to feed me so good, I didn't really have an opportunity to learn how to cook myself. So I'm not the best cook for that reason. But I feel like I'm good. I, if I really dedicate some time to anything, I feel like I, I will always do a good job. And so when I have to make like a dessert, we make this special traditional dessert for Christmas with my family, then I always make sure it's like the best. And I really care because I, I love that gift of food it's like a culture thing for me it's like it's a gift of food and people come together to eat and it's a whole thing so I really don't like eating by myself so that kind of makes me feel like I do like cooking when it's me and someone else or me and a group of people but I do not like cooking just for myself that's so boring it's like so boring okay this one is such a cute one you're you are a sensitive person and get emotional easily by the way I love you am I a sensitive person do I get emotional easily if I if we were to look at the scale of someone who's very rational and someone who's emotional, I'm probably more towards the emotional side, but I'm kind of like near the middle towards emotional. I can be emotional sometimes, but that's only because I truly care about everything that I put my heart and soul into. I would not say I'm a sensitive person. I would say I've got quite thick skin. I'm quite headstrong. I'm very determined. I'm very stubborn. I'm a Taurus. All you Taurus out there. Ooh. I'm a little bit more emotional than rational, but I actually really like that part of me I feel like that's where the passion comes in where I really care about something yeah okay guys so I hope you're still with me here and we're gonna end with this one it's you have a very big heart and care a lot about people I love you so much I love you too Emily that's so so sweet definitely feel like I care a lot about the people around me if you're in my circle I will do anything like I see myself as a very reliable person like if anyone ever needs anything I will be there if you need me there I'll be there if you need someone needs like I like protecting people I love looking after people so I always think that I'm quite a reliable person and wait what was the question again yeah I do care I do care about people I love people so much like I feel like people give me energy and that 
allows me to give that energy back. So that's really, really cool. I, I like to um, just be nice, like be a nice person and just open up your heart and yeah, just be real. Like just be a nice, genuine person. I truly believe in karma, guys. I feel like whatever you put out there, you get back. And I truly feel like you should always be that person who, you know, if your friend does well, like you should support them and push them. Like you should never feel jealous of them. Like their success is today and then maybe your success is tomorrow and then theirs is the day after so like we all have room to grow and there's so much space for everyone to just be the best version of themselves. I still feel like I'm still growing as a person. Like I really like the person that I am today and I feel like I still want to be better. So, you know, I try to work out. I try to meditate sometimes. I try to get myself in a really good space where I always want to be the best version of myself. And although I'm someone who does not like change, I think that that kind of growth, I don't like change, but I like growth. Okay, it's the difference. Because change kind of gets me on edge. I'm like, oh, what's going on? But growth, I love. I love to see growth. So if you feel like you're growing as a person and you're getting better and you're doing this and you're in a better space, then that's just amazing. But yeah, wow, this is getting deep. It's getting deep with me now, right now. It's like, I'm filming this on a Friday night. All right, so that is everything for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope this has been like a little bit of an insight to get to know me. I absolutely love watching these videos, like I said, because you just get to know a really different side of people. And I was just like, wow, like watching other people's videos of this topic. I was just like, wow, this is so, so cool. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Please, if you have, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, like write a comment down below. What are maybe some other assumptions about me? I'm happy to answer them in the comments. And also maybe what assumptions people have about you. I would love to know as well. So in the meantime, I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much to everyone who actually posted a message. And yeah, that's it guys. I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.